Hello Yaxley Infants, it's Reverend Sarah. How are you all doing? I hope that you're well. I hope that you're enjoying your week at school and that you're playing together and learning together and just being together in that place. Obviously all in your bubbles. But I hope that you're well and I really miss coming in, but maybe I'll get in before the end of term, who knows? But at least I can join you by video. Now I have got a new computer so things look a little bit different. I'm just trying it out today because it's only arrived today but I sadly damaged mine last week so I had to get a new one. So things look different, don't worry, that's why. We've been talking about Easter. We've been talking about Easter for quite a long time now, all before your Easter holidays and since you came back we've had another Easter story as well and I've got another one for you today as well. And we thought about all the way through from that special meal on Maundy Thursday where Jesus broke the bread and shared the wine with his friends and we remember that that was Jesus' last meal. And then we remember on Good Friday that Jesus died on the cross because he loves each one of us and to take away the bad things that happen in the world. We thought about the Easter Saturday about how there's a waiting, how sometimes we have to wait for things and oh my goodness it's difficult to wait isn't it? And then finally we get to that Easter Sunday, that amazing Easter Sunday, when Jesus rose again and he comes and he's with his disciples. And we thought about that story of the Emmaus Road, how Jesus walked and talked with these two people and he explained to them who he is and made sense of the Bible to them. And then when he broke that bread in their home, they realised it was Jesus. So we're going to think of a story today which is about fish. It's a little bit strange really, isn't it, to think of a story about fish. But our story today comes again after Jesus rose again. And we've got Jesus' friends, Jesus' disciples. And Peter, who is one of them, who I love, I think Peter's great. Peter one day went, I'm going fishing. Because several of the disciples of Jesus' friends were fishermen when Jesus called them to follow him. And so I think they thought, oh, let's go and have a day out fishing. It's all been a bit stressful over these last few days. And we all have things that we go and do when we get a bit stressed, things that just help us to get rid of some of that stress and worry. And so I think Peter thought, I'm going to go and have some time at sea. I'm going to take my boat and I'm going to go fishing. And the other friends say, OK, we're going to go with you. Not all of them were there at this point, but quite a lot of them went and they went out fishing. Now these are people who knew how to fish. I have absolutely no idea how you fish. I think I get very bored with fishing. But maybe you go fishing with other people. My husband loves fishing as well. And so you might have the right equipment. Now today we probably have something that looked a bit like this. Not the plastic version obviously. We'd have that. But back in the day we're talking about, which are thinking 2000 years ago, such a long time ago, they would have had nets and they'd have caught the fish in the nets and have lowered them over the side of the boat and pulled them back in. So they'd have had their nets, they'd have had their boat, which wouldn't particularly look like this at all because this wouldn't float or take people in it, just a paper boat that we made. There you go, two more paper boats as well that we made. It might look, I'm going to move for a minute, slightly more oh, like that one behind my head, like a sailboat. That's probably a little bit more like what the one that Peter and his friends went out in that night. And what we know from the Bible story is that they were out all night fishing. So they'd have had all the correct gear with them, they'd have their nets with them, they'd be in the right boat, they probably had the right gear on, they were wearing the right things as well. And they'd have put their, no their nets even over the side of the boat. And every now and then they'd have pulled them in to get the fish. What we know is that each time they picked them in, they brought them in, they were empty. There was nothing in those nets at all. How disappointing that must have been. Now let's think for a moment. These were people who fished for their job. They would have been people like people do today. They went out on their boats, they got their catch in their nets, they came back and they would have sold their fish and they would have made their living on that. So fish were very important to these people. Now how come on this evening, on this night, these people who knew how to fish got nothing? That's really strange, isn't it? But anyway, they fished all night, they kept putting their nets in and those nets were empty. And they went all through the night doing this and they got to the next morning and I want you to think like if you've been to the seaside think about the beach and the water and the disciples would be on the water in their boat but a much stronger boat than that 
and they'd have been there and suddenly on the beach there was a figure there was a person there and this person shouted out to them and said put your nets over the other side of the boat I wonder what you think if someone did that to you so they did they picked up their nets and they put them over the other side of the boat who do you think this person might be have you got any ideas who this person might be let me think what do you think happened next do you think they pulled their nets back in and they were empty no something amazing happened they pulled in their nets and there were so many fish in it oh my goodness so many they fall under my computer and onto the floor what we know and what the bible tells us there were 153 fish that's a very strange number but the bible tells us there were 153 fish so many that they had so much problem getting their nets and they all had to really heave hard to get those nets full of those fish in and suddenly those disciples those friends of jesus had a light bulb moment they suddenly thought i know who that person is and so peter this disciple who i think is great because he does everything brilliantly and then he gets it wrong in the next breath a bit like what we do we get it right one minute and then we get it wrong again peter jumps out of the boat into the water and starts wading to shore and he gets to shore and he finds that that person on the shore is in fact jesus i wonder what you'd be thinking now if that was you all these fish something amazing has happened well the other fishermen bring the boat in and they tie it up and they haul these fish in and then they have a barbecue essentially on the beach not like we do with posh barbecues they have put some sticks there and uh, they've had some rocks and then have had some heat and some flames and they would have made a fire and they'd have probably eaten those fish for breakfast and so this story is often known as barbecue on the beach and having a barbecue on the beach with jesus and we're told in this story that the disciples didn't need to ask who Jesus was because they knew and we're told that none of them dared ask but I wonder if you were sitting on that beach early that morning you'd been out all night and suddenly you caught all these fish what would you be thinking what would you be asking I wonder would you have some questions to ask Jesus I think I might do so we're going to take a moment just to think and reflect, a quiet moment for reflection on this story, a bit of thinking time. And maybe just think about what's your favourite part of this story? What did you love in this story? What surprised you? What would you want to ask Jesus if you could see him face to face? So let's take a moment to think. I wonder what kind of things you thought about. What questions did you have? I wish I was there and I could ask you and you could tell me, but never mind, just hold on to those. And I'm going to pray. And if you want to pray with me, that's absolutely fine. If you want to sit quietly, that's absolutely fine too. And at the end, if we want to join in, then we say Amen at the end of our prayers. So if you want to join in, then say that at the end with me. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this amazing story this story about those 153 fish and we think about jesus friends and how surprised they might have been and i thank you that this story helps us to know that you always give us the things that we need in our lives you are always there with us and so today whatever today is facing we are facing whether it's a good day or a difficult day a happy day or something that's a little bit more challenging we thank you that you are with us in this school so we say together amen well it's been lovely to do assembly with you today i hope that you have a lovely rest of the week whatever you are doing and i will do another assembly in another few weeks for you
Look after yourselves and stay safe. Take care, excellent infants. Bye.